Okay. So we will have uh, actually there are only three tasks that you need to work with me. The first task is too simple, so I don't need you to follow me. So you just need to see my screen. So this uh, the first task is to explore some repositories on the Docker Hub. So the Docker Hub is uh, it's just like a GitHub for sharing your uh, uh, Docker images with the others. So there are many useful repositories on this uh, Docker Hub. So for example, if you want to have a MySQL database, you don't want to install it yourself, right? So there are actually some developers already prepared the Docker image for you. So we can just go to hub.docker.com, the Docker Hub homepage, and then you can search what you want. So I type MySQL here, and you can see a lot of repositories here. So you can select one of them, and I will use the use the official one. So this is the Docker image prepared by by the of uh, by the developers from my MySQL. So when you click on it, you can see the documentation of MySQL, the Docker image documentation. So there are lots of details. It tells you how to run the Docker container and also how to configure the MySQL database. So we will follow, uh, we will uh, guide you to set up a MySQL database for your web development later. Okay, so there are many, many repositories that host different types of Docker images. And here I want to point out a new vocabulary, that is text. Oops. Text here. So in many Docker repositories, they are they will mention what text do they provide. So what is text? So when I click on it, you can see a lot of these things here. Actually, they are the version numbers. Usually, text refers to the doc, uh, to the version number of the of the image, but sometimes text can also refer to different variants of the same image. So you can see the documentation. It will it usually it usually explains what do the tag means, and in this repository, it mean it just means the MySQL version. So in this Docker lab, we will use five point five. We don't use the latest one because it is not supported by the PHP I mean. Um, okay. So suppose you select the MySQL five point five. So how to pull the image? This is very simple. Docker pull, you know this command already, and then the image name, MySQL, and then the tag. The tag is 5.5, .5, so we type 5.5 here, and separate the name and the tag with a colon, and it's done. I think I already pulled the image. If you didn't pull the image, please do it now. Okay, so I already pulled the image, so it, it will not download it again. And you can check what images you have in your Docker machine using Docker images, using this command, uh, this one. And you can see I already have uh, three images here. Okay, so, So now prepare your Docker machine and we will do the following steps together. Um, okay, after you download the, the Docker image, you may wonder that how to use a pre-built Docker image because the Docker image is already built and how can you configure the MySQL database? Because I want to set up my own password or I want to uh, create a new user for the database. So how can I do it? Actually, the developers of the MySQL Docker image already knows that there is a need for you to configure the container. So they expose server environment variables for adjusting the configuration. And you can find these uh, environment variables in the documentation. So there are how many? five of them. You can see you can set the root password, root password, 
and then you can create a database when you create the container and okay you can also create a MySQL user for your development and this one is optional and optional variable which allows you to set up a, an account with without password so we will try to set these four uh, parameters okay so now we are ready to run our MySQL container so type this command docker and run and minus name I want to set this uh, database set the containers name as DB this is the container name and then I want to set my root password as I want to set up my root password as password a very bad password and then minus D means that I want to run this in daemon mode and then the image name the image image name is mysql and then the tag 5.5 don't miss this or you will get the latest mysql version okay and enter and then check that if your container is running so mine is running okay this is very simple just use the minus e flag to indicate the value of the of the environment variables okay so this is the first task how about I if I want to create a new MySQL user other than the root account what can I do so back to the uh, doc documentation you can see that you can set up the MySQL user and password as these two variables so how can I set their values? First, I have to remove my DB container and then use the same command. And then first, I set the root password as password. And then I can set another variable by using minus D again. I can just repeat this fact again and again to set up different, different variables. Uh, so uh, I want to set up a database called Hello World, and then I want to create an account. I'd love to have an account called the PY one, and then my SQL password. You know the password is so set. Okay, so I oh yeah. So I create a new DB container here. If you have any problem, please raise up your hand. I will come to help you. Let me highlight the, the command here. Not large enough. Okay, see this line? The command is very similar with the one you use in the Docker lab, but you can see that we add a new flag called minus e to set up the values of the environment variables. And of course, you can set up your own values. You can set up your own password or your own database. You don't need to follow me as long as you have these arguments. The value is not important. And please also check that if check whether your container is already running by using Docker PS. If you finish creating the container, you can check if your database is ready to use. How can I check it? So I can access the shell of the new MySQL container by using the docker execute command this is a new command to you but it is very easy to use just docker and then execute uh, docker execute and then minus it means that I want to run, a in, run an interactive shell uh, and then the container name db and then the command you want to run uh, you want to run the command 
bash. So I type this. And then you get into the shell. Now I want to ask, uh, want to connect to the database in this shell, so I use the MySQL command. This is an, a command line version of the MySQL client. So I type MySQL and then specify my username. My username I want to use root. And then minus p means that I need to input and pass uh, a password for the root account. Enter, and then type your password. And then you can see this screen. And as we already created a database, we can check if the database can be accessed from the root account. You can use this MySQL query. Use, and then the database name. If you see the message database changed, then you are successful you have successfully created creating the, the, the MySQL container. And this is the end of this task. If you have any problem, please raise up your hand.
Okay, so let's go to the next task. Uh, the next task is this task is very important because you want to link up different containers. So why do I want to do this? First, we have to see this uh, the the architecture of our web app application. So here is the client, and then the client send request to your web server. And then the web server will QE the MySQL database to get the data from it and then serve the request for the client. So this is the, the expected architecture of most of the web application. And now you have uh, two, container, two containers in your Docker. One is the web server container and the other one is the MySQL container that we just created together. So how can we link up the web server and the MySQL database? So without Docker, you can use network port mapping. You can use the network port to connect the web server and the MySQL database. But in Docker, you don't need to do this because it is very troublesome to do this. Uh, doc actually, Docker do many things behind, behind the network. So you don't see anything about the network because the Docker have, has already do this for you. Um, so how can we link up these two containers? First of all, we need to prepare our MySQL database, the container. We already created it. If you didn't, please copy this command and create your own database. Mine is already okay. You can check this from the Docker PS command. So I have the DB container. So remember this container name. We will use this container name later. And the next step is to create a web server. Actually, in your Docker lab on Tuesday, you already created a web server container. But I won't use it because there are some configuration that I need to adjust, such that you can write, uh, write files to the data volume you mount to the container. So you please get my web server image here. This is the image I prepare for you. I install several package packages here. I install the PHP my admin, so you can uh, you can modify the contents of your database in the web interface. And I also install PHP for running PHP my admin. And also I install the MySQL DB. This is the Python package that let you communicate with your MySQL database. So these packages are very important for your first assignment. 
and I don't need you to configure the image yourself. I already prepared the image for you. So use this image. If you didn't pull this image, please do it now. It will take some time. Uh, I already have the image right here. Okay, and uh, now I'm going to start the web server container. Again, we are using the docker run command and run in daemon mode, expose the, the 18 port, 80 port for the web browser, uh, web server, and then I set up the container name of the web server. I use web as the name. And now I want to link up the MySQL database with my web server database. I will use minus link, use this flag. This flag is to connect two containers together. And then the argument is, first you will specify the MySQL database container name, which is DB. If you follow my step, then you probably use the same name, use DB. And then after DB, type colon and DB again. So what do this mean? The first, the first uh, part is the container name of the container uh, you want to connect to. Now I want to connect to my MySQL database, so I put DB here. This is the container name of your database. And you can check the container name from Docker PS, the last column is the container name. And then the second part, DB again. Actually, you can use other name, but this name is for you to access the MySQL database from your web server container. So you can treat this as an as a host name. In your CGI script, you use DB as the host name to connect to the MySQL database. So this is very important as well. Uh, and in this image, I expose uh, an environment variable called PMA host. This is for my for the PHP my admin to connect to the database. Because if you don't specify this, then the PHP my admin doesn't know how to connect to the MySQL database. It doesn't know where to go to. So you need to specify the database name. Again, DB. Actually, this one should match this one. Uh, this part is called the, the alias. Okay. And then the remaining is the same as before, minus V to mount and mount a folder to the web container. Uh, if you use Winstow, then don't follow my uh, don't follow this. You need to change to Windows specific part. Um, and then mount it to slash bash slash dot dot slash html and then the image name and then check if your web server container is running mine is running So from this command, you see that I use the minus link uh, flag to specify to specify that I want to connect the MySQL database to the web server database. This is the Docker way to connect two containers together. Uh, by the way, the the ordering of running the containers are very important. You must first create the MySQL database at the MySQL container and then create a web server container because you need to link the web server container to the MySQL container. If you create the, uh, the web server container before the MySQL container, then you can't connect to the MySQL container because it doesn't exist, right? So you need to create the MySQL database and then the web server database, always in this order. After you 
start the web server container, then you can go to the browser to visit your PHP my admin. So how can I connect to the PHP my admin? First of all, you need to check the Docker IP address if you are using Mac or Windows. This command is mentioned in the Docker lab. So my IP is this one. I guess most of you are using the same IP as well. And then type this IP and then PHP my admin. And you can see a PHP my admin set up for you. And now you can connect to your database using your own login name and password. As I create uh, an account called TY Wong, so I use it. After login, you should see this screen. And you can find your database here. I just created the Hello World database, so you can find it here. Okay? You can try to create some tables or insert some new entries to test if you can access the database.
Okay, now we are ready to use CGI script to access a database. So you can find a CGI script here. Just copy it and then put it in your Docker dev and then CGI bin. Uh, my folder is here. I already created this file. Put the CGI script in your CGI bin and then replace the username and password with the one you use to create the database. And, and then go to the browser to visit this CGI script. Um, mine is CGI script and then my SQL DB minus demo.cgi. If your execution is okay, then you should see database updated. And you can go back to the PHP my admin and find find that there are new there is a new table called test. When you click on it, you can find the item and value set as foo and bar. Then you are successful you have successfully used the CGI script to update the database. You can read the MySQL query from the CGI script here, this line. Is to create a test table and then insert a new entry to the table. And later on you will use uh, you will use the MySQL DB package to update your database in your assignment one. You will use Python to do the assignment. And this is your first script to access the database database in Python. Okay, so let's move on to the next task. This one is ready. Uh, by the way, if you can't follow me in, in the tutorial, you can do it after the tutorial. I will put the recordings to, the, to YouTube and you can view the video and follow the steps later. And the last task is to manage the data in containers. Actually, you know how to manage the data in containers. We have already introduced a way to mount your local directory to the to the web server container. This, this part it all is okay. But when it comes to the MySQL image, there is something very complicated that, that is related to the permission restriction in in, I don't know in virtual boss or in Linux I'm not sure about that but because of permission problem you can't mount a database uh, you can't mount a local directory to the to the MySQL container because the MySQL container cannot access your date your your local directory it can read the file here but it cannot write to it and if you imagine that you have a MySQL database that can only read but not write, then it is useless, right? So we have to get rid of this problem. So the Docker way, Docker way to, to solve this problem is to use data volume container. This is a special kind of container that is designed for sharing data with different containers. This type of containers does uh, do, do not run an application. So it just provides the storage for you. It will not run any process. So we will use the data volume container to host our MySQL database data. So let's see how to create a data volume container. Let me see if I have any container here. I already have three of them. Let me remove this one first. To remove our data volume container, you can type docker rm minus v and then the, the volume name. Okay, so now we can create the docker volume, a uh, data volume container together. The command is docker and then create minus v and specify the path you want to create. Now I want to create a data volume container for the MySQL database. So the path for hosting the database data is slash var slash like MySQL. 
this is the 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 directory for the MySQL database to put its data. And then I give the container a name, I call it BB data. And then a base image name. Actually the name is not important. Just give an existing image name. And the data volume container will use it as a base image for the for the uh, data volume container. Correct? And check if you have already created the data volume container using Docker PS and you can't find it, don't worry, minus A and you can find it. The reason that you can't find it in Docker PS is that the data volume container is not running so you can't find it in Docker PS. You can only find it in, in Docker PS minus A. Okay. Uh, and then you can mount the data volume container to your MySQL container. So how to do this? First of all, I need to remove the MySQL container and web server container. I need to reset them, so I remove it first. Okay. And now I start the MySQL container again. I use Docker. I have a script for this. Let me see. Docker run and then minus name is DB and then set up the environment variables. Just copy and paste. And then you see a new flag, volumes from. This is to mount a data volume container to the MySQL container. So remember this flag, it is used for mounting your data volume container to this container. So I want to mount the DB data. This is the container name of the data volume container. I want to mount it and then the following flags are just the same as before minus d semen mode and then mysql colon 5.5 okay and you can check that your database is up okay the next step is to run your web server and the command is exactly the same as before so I don't repeat it use a script to run it and go back to your browser refresh and let's see if the PHP my admin can access the database after you mount the data volume container password is password, ah, password is, you know. okay so you can access the, the, the database here So the good thing about the data volume container is that when you remove the database container, that is the My, MySQL container, when you remove it, the data is still here. So you can you can remove and then create the database again and again, but the data is still the same. And up, as you use the data volume container to host your data, there will be no permission problem. So it can be used in, in Docker in a very convenient way. See? Okay. So suppose you want to remove the data volume container later, you type date, docker rm-v and then the data volume name, a data volume container name. But it is important to note that you cannot remove the data volume container if you want to remain the data. Only remove the data volume container when you want to erase your database data. Otherwise, don't touch it. You don't even need to stop it because it is not running. It is not started, so it, you don't need to stop it.
and by using the data volume container, I can switch be switch between different different data volume containers. I can use different database data for the MySQL container. So I will do the demo here. You don't need to follow me for the remaining demo. Uh, so this is the version of using the DB data container to, to host the data. Um, now I'm going to switch to DB data 2 as a data volume container. So I have to first remove the MySQL container and web server container. Okay, I need to create a new DB container. I use the shell script and then I mount it to DB data 2. This script is to mount volumes from from somewhere. So the somewhere is this argument, DB data 2. I mount the DB data 2 to my MySQL container. And this is running. And the next step is to run the web server container. Okay, refresh. And you can see there are some new things here. I have a new database and then yet another table. I can find the data here. So I didn't do anything to the PHP my I mean, I just changed the volumes from the DB data to DB data 2, and then I get another set of data. So by switching between different data volume containers, you can get different input data for your MySQL container. So that is the good thing for the for the data volume container. Okay. So this is the last task you will need to do. I have the final task here, but this is optional and I won't demo it here because time is up. This is to describe how to automate the whole doc, whole process for building a Docker image. Because in the Docker lab, you type command and then, and then do Docker commit and Docker push to build a new Docker image. But actually the, the workflow is not, is not so troublesome. There is a better workflow for it. The keyword is Docker file. You put all your commands in your Docker file and then Docker will know how to build your image. So using this file, you can automate the build process. And if you are interested in building your own image using Docker file, you can read this page and also the reference here. It's just not that, uh, not that difficult. And you can also find my Docker file here. This is the Docker file for building the web server container. You can read it. It, is, it just installs some package and setting some configurations. Um, this part is not required in your assignments. You don't need to build your own image. We already provide the MySQL database image and the web server image. Your assignment will be based on these two images to work to implement as a CGI program for 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 uh, this is a photo album actually, and the specification will be released later. Uh, so in assignment one, you will use the Docker to build to build your own uh, development environments and your CGI program will be running on these environments when we are doing the grading. So please get familiar with these, these, uh, the whole workflow of Docker. Okay, so if you have any problem, you can, you can ask me after the tutorial. And this is the end of today's tutorial. And for the GitLab part, I will post a video later. GitLab this part. It, it is to help you to get familiar with the workflow of submitting your assignment. Um, I will post the details later. And the, this is the end of the Docker Lab.